Hello. I I I think it's always one thing. It's not one thing. It's always another. Alley Pants, Montana. I'm minding my own business, scrolling to TikTok as I always do. And my good friend, Alley Pants, pop up in a in a picture video. And I'm I'm shocked at what happened. So take me back to what happened. Well, I was in my personal truck, my pickup, and I was sitting at a stoplight on a bridge and a lady uh rear-ended me. Uh, she totaled her vehicle, she totaled my vehicle, and she damaged two other vehicles. And, you know, welcome to life, my friend, you know what I mean? Wow. So, yeah, you're just stopped at, what, a red light or something like that? Yeah, I'm just at a busy intersection, and there, I don't know, I guess there was probably about 10 cars in front of me, but it backed me up to a bridge that I was sitting on, and I'm just sitting there waiting for a green, and all of a sudden, I'm flying through space and time. The pictures that I'm looking at, or at least the pictures that I saw, was damage to your to your front end. So, what the impact from the back was was to the point that pushed you into a, another vehicle? Yes. So I got really lucky, I think, because I had a tow hitch, ball hitch on the back of my truck, and it took the majority of the impact and pushed it through the frame. And then the bull bumper I had on front took the majority of the impact from the front side and pushed it back through the frame. So most of that impact went through the sturdiest part of the vehicle, and I feel really lucky for that. But if you look at the picture of the rear end of the truck, you'll see that ball hitch is bent down at about a 45-degree angle, which is pretty significant because those tow packages are hooked to the frame itself. So that tells you about the condition of the most sturdy part of the vehicle, you know? Well, I'm, I'm glad everything wasn't no serious injuries or anything like that. I'm, am, am I right to say that? Has everybody made it out alive? standing on two feet yes yes thank you that's so that's so good i think there were just some minor injuries uh the lady who hit me i think she hurt her arm the really big blessing of the whole thing was there was a little three-year-old girl in the car in front of me and she came out just fine no problems at all thank god and so you know considered it's a blessing i'm just bummed you know that was the project truck for my dad and i so but that's why. So we're going to talk about that in a second. Every time I'm involved in an accident, per my lawyer, not to get out and say anything, just put your statement on when the cops get there. But was there anything that the lady said that 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 was the reason why she caused the cost to run into you? Well, so because it was so busy on that street, I did not get up get out of the vehicle until the cops got there and so I never talked to anybody else that was involved in the wreck but the cop did say that she had told him she spilled a drink and was trying to clean it up and her foot got caught underneath the brake and it's plausible I could see it you know spilling your morning coffee I was on the way to work so wow she just wasn't yeah it's just one of those things you know definitely could have paid more attention she got they cited her for careless driving uh but, you know, I mean, I'm I'm not upset with her because I get it. I, you know, how many times do we spill something in our concentration or radio station or whatever? That's all it takes is just a split second. We know that, you know. Yeah, you being a truck driver, you, you definitely know and understand what distracted driving can do to us out here. I talked about a few accidents that just happened recently. You know, the young lady off the bridge in Ohio. And we try to be the best that we can be out here. We try to be focused, but we, we never know what's the mindset or or what's going on in the other vehicle. You there, you there, mind your own business and waiting for the light to change and all of a sudden the young lady drops her coffee and boom that that pretty much affects you so it's it's understandable and it's crazy out here thank you i appreciate that yeah i think that um like that really highlights the idea that i think that we should uh require four-wheelers to have some kind of a continuing education metric for driving uh you know because when you think about it we learn how to drive when we're 16 you know 15 16 and then there's no follow-up after that whatsoever for the rest of our lives and so when we get older we forget the laws we 
get complacent, we get comfortable because we've been driving for so long. As drivers, we know what all that, what that's all about, and I think there should be follow up. I agree. I, I agree. I agree. Agree wholeheartedly with you. All right. So unfortunately, the truck was totaled. Her insurance is taking care of all that. Yeah. See, uh, I'm very lucky that I got hit by somebody that has good insurance. And uh, I, that was my initially, other than people being hurt, that was my secondary uh, fear was, oh, God, does she have insurance? But I thought to myself, you know, it doesn't really matter. I have good insurance. So either way, I'm going to be covered. All right. So, of course, they came and pretty much totaled it out. Did they give you an idea? Did they give you a ballpark figure or are they going to replace the car or, or what? They're still working on that. Uh, the adjuster is going to be looking at it either tomorrow or Monday, and then they'll come back with a number and we'll sort it out from there. You're bummed out, Allie. Uh, this was a pet project between you and your old man, something that you shared. And if I'm not mistaken, I know you uh, chronicled it via videos. When that happened and after everything has worn down and you go back and look at it, what's, what's your feelings now? And did you tell your father and how he feel? I told him and he was fine with it. He was just glad nobody was hurt. Uh, but I, I'm just, you know, the sentimental value of it is the bummer of it all. Uh, it was his truck. He sold it to me last year. And we did some work on it last summer. And we had a bunch of big plans this summer. And I had already started buying parts and, you know, lining it all up. But, you know, I mean, emotionally, it's just rough. But we'll just have to adjust. You know, we'll find something else. Maybe we'll pick up a different hobby that's less expensive. I don't know. You know? <laughs> okay. Maybe we can play cards or something instead. I Yeah. So I'm bummed. I'm bummed because I it was really, for those that don't know, my parents recently just moved into a retirement home. And so they felt very much like they were losing their independence in doing so. And this was a way for my dad to feel like he still had some agency. And so even though I owned the truck and I paid for everything, he took a lot of pride in, in being a, a part of that. And so that's the part that's hard, you know. Well, Allie, thank you again for always keeping up with me and oh. letting me know what's going on with you. You have a lot up under your belt as far as experience goes you're an experienced truck driver you just recently got your certificate for diesel mechanic what are we doing now like wh wh what are we doing now Allie? Uh, well so actually tomorrow is my last day at my current job i'm gonna be going back to a different company to haul the mail the company i was working for before went out of business so i laid off another this job here uh, and it's been a fun challenge. I gotta tell you, I've been hauling sets and learning how to do all the all the putting stuff together and the taking stuff apart. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, but the one of the other mail haulers came through and they had a position that's gonna allow me to work on my uh, organization that I started last year, the Big Healthy Body Project, which is exciting because we're about to hit a pretty big milestone. And so I'm gonna have the time to really put some more time into that. So I'm pretty stoked. Okay, okay. So you're going back to the company. So is this the company that you and your ex was at that closed down? That's the one that closed down, yeah. I'm going to a different company. It was a competitor. Uh, and so they have, it's nice too because they have runs that are more uh, local. So I'll be home every night. Okay, okay. So you found something that's much more comfortable, which gives you a lot more freedom to do some extra stuff and uh, and still get yourself together for whatever foreseeable future yeah exactly and so i'm excited i'm bummed because i like the company that i work at now but it takes a lot of energy to do this particular job and so i need to have some of that energy left over uh, for the Big Healthy Body Project. Well, Ali Pants, as always, thank you for your insight. Thank you for sharing, and thank you for being a friend of the channel. As always, I guess until until next time. Yeah, thank you, my friend. It's good to hear from you. I hope you have a great weekend. Hopefully, it's great weather everywhere. It's really nice here, sunny today. So it was good to hear from you. Since we're on the subject of tiktok there has been some some whole lot of changes with the app and with the direction of of some of the content that's on there i want to get your thoughts on that the app now is like 
focusing more on long form content, uh, the short form content. I think they're getting their steady, getting away from. They want you to record in in landscape mode now in order to in in order to push the videos. They're going as I said before. I I I've been saying this for year that they want to end up like YouTube at the at the end of the day. So with with all that said, they just taking the, I guess the fun that used to be in TikTok out of it now. Every time you go to the for you page, it's is live streams it's 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 back to another live stream and then it's back to an ad and then you probably get the occasional couple of videos from some creators and then it's back to the ads and then the live streams what, what's your feelings on it now i know you've been away from it for a little bit but do you agree that it has changed since since the inception of TikTok? Oh, yeah. It's not nearly as fun as it used to be. Um, and I don't know if that's just because the luster of something new has worn off or if it's because, you know, they just have changed it to make as much money as possible. There's probably a little bit of all of that involved. But I think the biggest thing is I don't think they're trying to end up like YouTube. I think they're trying to absorb YouTube, right? And so I like the variety that you get on TikTok. I think it's great. You get short form, you get long form, you get funny, you get serious. You get a little bit of everything, whereas when you go to other platforms, you have to look for those things. Uh, you know, you have to look for whatever topic you want to see. But I think that the pacing is bad. So, for example, I think that they need to, you know, run run their live streams and their their TikTok shop ads. I think those need to be fewer and farther in between. I think they need to sprinkle in some of the regular lives and then they need to sprinkle in some short form and some long form. Like, they need to better showcase their variety and stop selling quite so much. Awesome. Awesome. And I, and I do agree with you. other platforms just like YouTube and Instagram. Well, not so much Instagram, but YouTube. Yeah, you definitely have to search. And of course, YouTube is the second largest search engine on the Internet right now. And of course, Google is, is the first one. But I agree with you the way that the UI is set up on TikTok where you could just scroll and you could scroll and get to get to something that might be of interest to you without even having to search for it. Yeah, I think if they went back to that and they took out, I'd say about half of the ads, the TikTok shop ads, whether those are TikTok shop lives or TikTok shop sales pitches, um, I think if they took those out, and it, like took them down by half, that would improve the experience. I don't think they actually want people to shoot in landscape mode. Um, I don't know about length of video. I think those are all just ways to try and keep the algorithm fresh so that people don't get bored with the same old thing over and over again. And, you know, because they're constantly changing algorithm met metrics. And I think that's just, that's all that is, is the long form of the landscaping is just changing metrics to keep it fresh so they'll change them here again you know soon and it'll be something else next time and they're just gonna go with whatever works best you know exactly exactly